Now, the quilts in the exhibition really depict Russian folk culture um, and, and folk architecture is, and, and folk dress uh, make frequent appearances in the quilts of this exhibition. So for instance, in this quilt, this first quilt you see, a woman is wearing a traditional seraphon dress and a kokoshnik headdress. And she's sitting next to a samovar, which is used to boil water for making tea. And tea culture is very important in traditional Russian folk life. So this, this quilt really, in a nugget, summarizes a lot of Russian folk culture in one sort of snapshot. Uh, you also see a matroshka doll, and those are famous worldwide. Matroshka means little matron. And these nesting dolls uh, were first made in, the, in 1890, actually, and became very, very uh, common and popular. They're usually depicting women in folk dress. Uh, now, as I said, traditional architecture is uh, often depicted in these quilts. And as many of us are familiar with, um, Traditional Russian Orthodox churches frequently feature rush, uh, onion domes. So you'll see that many of the quilts in this exhibition have those onion domes. And in this first piece, um, which is the Donskoy Monastery in Moscow, so Moscow's on the Don River. Um, this is a depiction of that of the Donskoy Monastery. It was founded in the 1590s. Um, and what I love about this piece is how the maker created that onion dome using um, some beautiful gold lame fabrics. It really makes the dome shine the way I'm sure they do in real life. In this next quilt, uh, we see the golden gate of Vladimir. So Vladimir and Suzdal are the two towns uh, where most of these quilts were made. And these are two ancient um, towns or villages about 150 miles northeast of Moscow. And these, these towns have really old architecture. This is, as I said, the Golden Gate of Vladimir and it's from the 12th century. It is currently, it ha or has become a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So the, the people who live in this part of Russia are, are rightly very proud of the ancient architecture and traditional buildings that they have in their midst. Some of the quilts also depict a sort of more everyday architecture, provincial architecture, countryside architecture. And you see in this quilt a uh, pastoral scene with uh, some sheds or outbuildings and a, and a windmill. Interestingly, or you can take note of the traditional dress also, though the woman is wearing a seraphon dress and the man is wearing a um, Kos Kosovorotka tunic. So that's a traditional men's tunic and his pants are tucked into the tops of his boots, a very handsome couple, maybe they're out courting. Um, and finally, uh, we see some more young women in traditional dress, again, wearing seraphon dresses and headscarves. They are sort of dancing uh, across the river from Suzdal's Church of St. Nicholas. And it's, again, a very pastoral, pleasant scene, evoking traditional life in this part of Russia. Uh, the reason why the village of Suzdal has so much traditional architecture surviving in it is that in 1864, uh, local businessmen tried to get the railroad to come through uh, their town in order to increase business and traffic flow, uh, but they failed. And so uh, the town really sort of stagnated to a certain degree or just stayed the, the way it was um, from the 19th century onward and very little changed there. So at this point, Suzdal has become uh, a major heritage and tourist site. And in fact, the annual International Quilt Festival, the Russian Quilt Festival is held there 
uh, every year in Suzdal. So it is quite a, it's a, a area rich in tradition and in um, fabric tradition, including quilts. 